Hey guys, what's up? Not at Roots Refuge Farm right now. It's actually the morning after Thanksgiving. Um, I feel like I was hit by a train from cooking all day yesterday, but I will recover. I'm about to walk into my office and I want to tell you about something special that's going on this morning. So I've given a full tour of my office before. Hey KK. Hello. But today's a little different because KK's here. Um, so she met me down here to share with you guys a special we have going on. And if you miss my office tour, I'm going to give you a little brief one. Um, this is where I record my podcast. My podcast stuff is actually not here right now. I took it home this week and recorded this week's podcast in my RV because it was Thanksgiving prep and it was crazy. But oftentimes I'll come here and edit or write. It's just nice to have a little quiet space. But back here in this room is KK's office. Hello. Hello. KK and I rocked Thanksgiving yesterday. We sure did. Um, we're about to head back to the house now, but we came down here to tell you guys about our current sticker sale. So I thought it would be cool for those of you who have ordered stickers to see Michaela's little process. But first, I want you to tell everybody what we're doing this weekend for the shopping weekend. Oh, and by the way, this is Jeremiah's little sister, baby sister. Yep, yeah, baby sister. <laughs> and she has worked with us now for three years. Years, and she moved out here to South Carolina with us. And if you have ever purchased a sticker from Roots and Refuge in any form, um, it has touched these lovely hands. <laughs> So, all right, KK, will you tell us what our sale is? Michaela came up with this. She is the mastermind mm -hmm. behind our sticker business. So, as kind of a thank you for supporting us all year, we wanted to offer a really good sale uh, for Black Friday. So, we're going to do 48 hours at 50% off and 48 hours at 25% off. So, the sale will end like midnight Monday. Mm -hmm. And so, you have four whole days to shop the site. And I'm adding some product that we've had. Jessica did some stickers a couple years ago. You wanna show everybody what we got here? Yeah, so here's some of the stickers that Jessica did in 2020. And I will be adding these back onto the website and some other sticker packs that we've done um, over the last couple years, bringing them back. And we do have limited quantity, so I su they suggest We'll also get on that 50% off. Oh yeah, the 50% off is great. And these are great stocking stuffers or like lit, great little gifts you can put in like a card mm -hmm. to send to a loved one. But yeah, awesome. so. This was our very first sticker. Yep. Right here. Oh, and we still down. have We still have the mini veggie stickers. Oh yeah, these are great for your seed boxes to decorate. And then we have our magnet packs, which. Mm -hmm. Those are 50% off too. Yep. Everything will so be so the grab bags are like just random ones from past things, mm -hmm. and then there's also artist grab bags like my grab bag, my artist grab bag. I think there's a couple other artists too, right? Yep, we have Sam, yeah, and then we have Carol. Awesome! Oh, these were really pretty too. Yep, and then I love we creative have... friends. Look at all this. People come in and they're like, Where is everything? I'm like, I have no idea. This is my case, <laughs> oh, and this is Jessica's. Me. I was like, that looks familiar. Yeah, <laughs> you did I this. I drew that. <laughs> awesome. All right, and one more little thing that we decided to do. So over here in the office, these are some odds and ends shirts and tank tops and hoodies uh, from previous merch drops. So I'm like, here's real food comes dirty. Um, I will tell you that there is a chance. Huh, take do 10. Um, I will tell you that there is a chance. <laughs> If you end up getting one of these hoodies that I wore it if it's a size large or extra large. <laughs> but I promise only for like the recording of a single podcast and then I put it back. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to pick 10 random orders. So in the notes of your order, put your shirt size. Okay. And we, out of the ones that have a shirt size included, we're going to pick 10 and we're going to include just a free random shirt. Can't, you know, obviously there's gonna be a lot of orders. So however many orders comes in, that defines the odds. But 10 orders, include your shirt size in the notes. Um, adult, extra small to what, 3XL, I think. Yeah. Or maybe. Yeah, we I have think. small to 3X. Okay, yeah, I think that's what we have it here. Um, and they're all random, they're all different kinds. You, you know, you may get something you have already have, but that's what we're doing. So. 
10 orders, make sure you include your shirt size to be included in that. And the link to all of this will be down below to our sticker shop. All right, KK, well, you want to show us your process? Sure. Say an order From, comes in, and what do you do? So I walk in. <laughs> Taking then, it from the top. <laughs> and then I go to the ship station. I print a label here. The label comes out here. Mm -hmm. I then take it and I come over here with love in my heart. <laughs> and I grab all the stickers that I need for that order. And then I take one of these lovely postcards. Every order comes with this postcard, by the way, so you can put our first sticker somewhere lovely. And that's me, I wrote that. With this beautiful envelope that Jessica also designed. And doodled all over. And I love Sweet Maya, my babies, bear dog, stickers, tomatoes, and you. <laughs> there we go. And then I... Oh, postcard, sorry. So the postcard actually has a double purpose here. It actually helps keep the stickers from being bent as well. And I put it in here. And I normally have a rag because I don't think you want me slobbering all over your envelope. <laughs> but I get a wet rag and do it. And then I put your label here. And then, and then I take it to the post office. Nice. Lovely. Well, thank you, Michaela. And thank you, guys. I actually have some footage that I shot yesterday morning before it got super crazy on Thanksgiving. So let's check that out, and then I'll meet you back here at my office afterwards. Oh, hey, guys. Good morning. Happy Thanksgiving. Oh, I just poured my coffee, so I'm gonna take a second and sip on it before I proceed with what I'm working on. It's Thanksgiving morning. I think we had frost last night. It's actually been the first time that it's frosted since the first frost, which was at this point, like, what, three weeks ago or something like that, but it's a nice morning. Sun's rising over the frost-kissed farm. I like that. So I'm working on something that is a tradition here in our home. So I told you guys whenever I was telling you about our grocery store challenge, how um, the 1st of October we started a challenge of not grocery shopping and like basically forcing ourselves to live off our pantry, our freezers, our farm, and then what we make from those things from scratch. So, um, and then, and we continued bulk buying because I didn't want to just like completely use up my pantry. I wanted to be able to replenish it but with whole ingredients so that I was not tempted to fall into convenience foods and it's really pushed us and like the kids lunches and really like using up leftovers and all that stuff. It's been really good but I said that I, I had to make a couple of exceptions one for Thanksgiving and one for Christmas because there were certain things at the store for just like our traditional things and honestly for the most part I cook almost everything from scratch um, for Thanksgiving. I do buy obviously things like cranberries that I don't normally have and make like cranberry sauce from scratch. I shared a recipe for that over on the farmer's table. I could I'm sure make this dough from scratch in some way. It may even be extremely simple but this is nostalgic. When I was a little girl, my aunt, my Aunt Anne, made sausage pinwheels every single holiday morning. She made these. And they're literally the most simple thing. So you get canned crescent rolls and roll them out. I'll show you when I do the next one. And then sausage, which is thawed. This is sausage from a hog we recently processed. And you just mash the sausage out and then roll them up and slice them like so and then bake them until they're golden brown whatever 15 12 13 minutes something like that so what does this say well this is the 10 to 13 minutes so that's when I'll take a look at them and I've literally eaten these well I can't eat these now because I can't eat gluten but I ate them every single holiday morning of my life until then and then my children have eaten them every single holiday morning of their entire life and it's just one of those things that I'm not prepared to really change. It's okay sometimes to have exceptions, even if your goal is to make food from scratch and to do things supernaturally and all of that. Like it doesn't have to be 
such an intense rule and and honestly I don't ever buy like canned biscuits because you can make biscuits so much cheaper but for this particular application you gotta stick with nostalgia and that's what I'm doing <laughs> my kids love waking up to sausage pinwheels they're so easy I mean these could easily be like a morning breakfast on a school day they're that simple that this could be like a regular thing but because we only do them on the holidays it's like maintained this specialness it's almost I guess fabricated a specialness to them and I remember like asking my aunt when I became an adult being like aunt Anna, how do I make sausage pinwheels like and in my mind they must be so like it must be something because it was such a big deal because it was tradition because it was every time because it was the flavor of Thanksgiving morning and I remember asking her and she was like it's literally the easiest thing and it's funny because I can't remember exactly I need to ask her to be sure but I mean I'm pretty sure it's just something that she learned I mean it's just using like canned crescent dough crescent roll dough and sausage maybe it was in a magazine it was just something she just started doing at some point it wasn't that it was some fancy thing or fussy thing. It's just something she started doing, but because she did it consistently, it became the taste of Thanksgiving morning. And that taught me a really big lesson about creating atmosphere and traditions for holidays in a home. It's really not about being fancy. It's really not about like busting your butt. Of course we do, but more than anything, it's just about being consistent. It's just about consistently and joyfully showing up and that's how heartwarming traditions are made so here i am thanksgiving morning before anybody else in the house is up rolling out the sausage pinwheels like i have every single thanksgiving of my adult life all right i'll show you guys this um even though it is like extremely simple i know that some brands of crescent roll dough you can buy and it's a sheet um but like this brand doesn't come that way so you just kind of got to press it back together because these are already like perforated so just roll it out just kind of press the perforated places back together to make a more consistent sheet thought out breakfast sausage mash it flat and just cover the entire sheet with it All right, and now we're gonna bring this in and just roll it. And if the perforated places are starting to pop open, just squish them back together. Now at this point, um, I've got two trays in the oven. And if this gets to be room temperature, it's harder to slice, it, gets, it just sort of squishes. So you can do this the night before, put them in the fridge, but if I get some of these roll made, instead of trying to slice them right now, I'm just gonna stick this actually in the freezer because I'm gonna slice it in 10 minutes when those come out. When it's cold, it slices better. When my children are younger and they woke up at like the crack of dawn and were hungry immediately, I would prepare all of these the night before and I would just put them in the refrigerator so that the next morning I could just wake up, preheat the oven, slice them and put them in. Um, my kids are older now and so it's like seven and nobody's awake. So they won't, they won't like wake up on their own until like 7.45 to eight o'clock. There we have it. There's our little Thanksgiving breakfast. I'm gonna wrap it up so they're still warm. All right, back at the office, I actually just edited what you just watched. That little tradition, that small, simple thing, has created atmosphere in my home for Thanksgiving 
for so long and I wanted to share it with you. I think I've mentioned it before. I don't know if I've ever shared making them. Um, I, I've spent, what, six Thanksgiving mornings now as a content creator, so I, th I figured it was probably about time if I haven't showed that before. It really is the little things, and I proceeded to cook an incredible Thanksgiving dinner from scratch with Michaela, and, you know, some friends came over and helped, and it was great. We had a, we had a wonderful Thanksgiving. Um, it's funny to me that one of the most lasting things is as simple as that, and it's a big deal to make kids. It's a big deal to me to be able to make them. And um, I'm thankful my Aunt Anne was consistent in creating that little family tradition. So I hope you guys had a wonderful holiday. You have a safe weekend and um, a level-headed dive into the, the Christmas season. I'm glad to be able to offer you guys a, a lovely discount here on our sticker store. And I hope that these stickers bring a smile to somebody's face. Thank you guys for hanging out with me today and all the days you do. I bless you. Until next time.